Welcome to our program. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, actually we be met a uh, long time ago yes. and uh, I uh, plan to visit you, but uh, you know, now we take this chance and uh, uh, actually it's uh, about your book, you know, the book you sent to me. Yeah. Uh, mm. Anand mm. Um I was so impressed. I was uh, crying and I was uh, full of tears yes. and uh, I read it in a stretch. I just read it uh, one day, only oh, one, one day, and I just finished it. I was so very happy to. It was the, uh, not my own initiative. It was my publisher, Wang Yaming. Uh, I showed him this uh, CD I had made, Double Album, and to make people understand but these recordings were made very long ago. And so I had put in six pages of black and white photos. And uh, he was very upset when he saw, where did you get these pictures? Nobody had a camera about during that period. It was only the Xinhua Shudian, the Xinhua uh, publishing house, they, they had the uh, uh, cameras and they photographed happy workers and happy uh, soldiers and so on. But you, your pictures, do, how may, have, you, have you got more? Yes, I said, I want to publish them, he said. And so I, when I came back to Sweden, I tried to find out and I had 680 photos from mm. these two years. Because I realized when I did that during some time that I will forget how it, what it looked like. Uh, I will not be able to remember how the streets looked, how the restaurants looked, and, and so on. So I decided I borrowed a camera. I had never taken any photos before. So I just went out and picked just people queuing for food, queuing for buses and whatever it was. And uh, so I was very happy. I wrote a lot of letters back. And I found 79 long, long, long letters written on that very thin paper that was called air paper because they, it, they co didn't cost so much to send when you sent it to Yeah, it's so Sweden. light. It's it's light. So light. Mm -hmm. And so at first I, I just wrote very short introduction to what is this actually? Uh, is it the uh, one for James Tree and so on? Then I realized there's so much more to tell about this. And so I began to write just an ordinary text. And then I put in the adequate photos there. So had people reading the text, they could understand what the, the, the photos were. And so I worked with that for seven years. And um, then when it was going to be translated, I got a, my uh, translator. He sent me a mail and said, your publisher would like to, to, to see, uh, read the manuscript. And I said, please wait until you have seen all of it. Because I knew there was so much that were criticizing China during, during that period. And uh, so when he had read all of it, he said, he sent a letter to mail to me and said, wonderful, I thank you so much that you have written this book. Because I had never heard anything said, being said about that period mm -hmm. in China's history. Yeah, yeah. My, we didn't learn anything at school and I had not, my parents had not told me anything about it. Actually, so, to my surprise, you know, when I read the Chinese history or party history, whatever, mm -hmm. I'm not aware that there are so many overseas students there, mm -hmm. you know, from all the socialist countries yes. and so on. Four from the West. Yeah, yeah, the West and the, yeah, all the other international yeah. students. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds like in the 60s uh, we only have Chinese and we only have an mm. inner world, but mm -hmm. in fact we also that time raised a lot of international students mm. and we have uh, students from the third world mm -hmm. and then we also have exceptional mm -hmm. Swedish yes. and the, you know, the Western world. Mm -hmm. So when I went to China in January 1961, that was the first time, mm -hmm. and I didn't know anything. 
There were no journalists writing in our channel during that period, no television. And so I didn't know about all the problems after the Big Leap Forward mm. and the previous communes. Mm. And I didn't know that about 35 to 40 million people had died just of starvation, not getting enough food. I didn't it's know a, It's a conversation, it's like a uh, it's a, like a combination of uh, yes. all the factors yes. all in those factors. years. Yes. Yes. So it was gradually that I realized what the situation was. Mm -hmm. And I wrote and wrote and wrote letters to my family about it. And so I could use that when I wrote this book. And uh, actually it was published in China last year. And in December it was chosen as one of the ten best books published last year in China. So I feel very, very proud of that. That's and I feel thing. also very proud for you because, uh, you know, I have interviewed you before, right? Yeah, and, yeah, that, yes. and that time was uh, you win the Augusti. Yes. And uh, it's like uh, the novel in a country yes. or, uh, or Maldun in China, yes. you know. So it's a very high prize in Sweden. Yes. And, uh, and then you won two. Yes. Of that. Yes. One is the book about the Chinese characters, the other one is about the instrument Gu Qin. And uh, I studied that for two years at a small institute, Gu Qin Yan Yu Hui. And uh, it was a very strange experience to meet the political situation at Beida, at Peking University, with all the oppression and all the. I mean, they were very much. Uh, but you met the best uh, Gu Qin teachers I in China, I all the over China. Absolutely the best one. And so I had th these two worlds. They were quite different worlds. One was pol political oppression and the one, the old Chinese one. The music. Country. Well, they, they knew everything that I wanted to ask about. About music, of course, but also philosophy and poetry and, and so on. And so I write about that in my book too. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel you have really sort of records because this is just a two years experience and you make two books and mm -hmm. also the music records. Yes, yes. Yeah. and actually three books about that period because it's the Hansu one. Okay, yeah, 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 also. It's yeah. about the Qin yeah. and about the other world. Mm -hmm. the same. Actually, I want to ask you because last time I remember when I interviewed you, I said, what's your next project? You said, I save a lot of calligraphy, actually. I want to make a calligraphy book. Well, actually, I've been working so on this So this is replaced by this photo one. Yes, I have uh, been working quite some, some time about a book about Chinese paper cuttings. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, sorry, that, I that, want that, to say paper cutting, yeah. not a they calligraphy. Not, uh, I mean, pa the paper cuttings, they used to be made by women up in the very far away north, northeast, mm -hmm. northwest. And uh, in the winter time, they had nothing to do in snow, cold winter, mm -hmm. the rivers were frozen. And they were sitting at home and using leaves to, to cut interesting figures mm -hmm. uh, of uh, their daily life. Mm -hmm. And they were so, and then in the, during the new year, Spring Festival, they put up this on the, on the uh, paper windows to make it like a church window. It, it, they were so beautiful, so beautiful. So and you then, think this will be in the pipeline, next one? Yeah, that's the next one, when I do, I hope I will have the time to, to finish that. I'm I, sure you will have. I have to, <laughs> yes. because I went many times up to this place north of Yenan, it's called Ansai. It's an old military post there. Mm -hmm. There are only some few hundred people living there. And once saw in Beijing a, uh, an exhibition of paper cutting from women in, in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day in 1992, a Chinese friend telephoned to me. You remember, I mean, to telephone from China during that period, yeah. it was almost impossible. Yeah. So I got a message in the morning, there is somebody who would like to make a telephone call to you in the afternoon, so please keep the hole at three or four o'clock. 
and then they transfer the, the, the telephone call to somewhere where in India and back to Switzerland and from Switzerland to Sweden yeah. and then brrr, there was a Chinese friend saying Amsai is open now okay. and he, it has had not been open since the First World War because it was a military area. Mm. So I immediately took leave from my job as a teacher and I went at, immediately up to Amsai and I and traveled said, there for two weeks yeah. and collected and that was the beginning of my very interest in This is something also impressed me so much, you know, you were such a great teacher, to taught a lot of students who study Chinese and then you decide to stop and write a book. Yes. And you just concentrate on writing books. Yes. And I, I feel like I really so um, admired, but I also wonder, you know, how, how do you write? When you write a book, you just uh, write, write from your memory, or you think, uh, oh, I have a plan, I must write this so that it's attractive, and write that so that it's attractive. Yes. So how did you think that time? Well, when I wrote the book about the characters, I worked with that for 15 years, 15. The book about Gu Qin, I had, uh, say, seven, six or seven years to work uh, before I was content and uh, felt happy with the text. And with this next book uh, about my memories in the beginning of the 60s, for about five years. So I take my time and it has to take time, um, otherwise I can't leave it before I have done whatever I can. So it's, it's like you, you write it there and then yes. you read again and then you want to... Write and read and read and read and write, rewrite write and rewrite. Okay, so it's uh, editing, editing. Yes, and uh, thousands of times. And then I find something interesting. And then I must add, I must change something. Okay, and yeah, then you have to rewrite a lot. <laughs> I have to rewrite it. It's a way of life. I, I love that. I love that. I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.